What's up, folks? Episode 24 of the Ball Guy Show starts in 30 seconds. What's up, everybody? Yes, this episode is brought to you once again by DZJ Notary Services. We are a bilingual mobile notary company where we serve all of East DFW, and we are bilingual. We come to you no matter what you need. My next guest is a friend of mine. He's my co-worker, but he's also... An aspiring actor. He is an actor. He's done a few things. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna get to hear his background, what he's done, what he's planning on doing next. My good friend Terry. What's up, Terry? What's going on, my friend? How we doing? Good man. Good, 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 good man. I know we've been trying to get this going, trying to get you on for a while, uh, but we we're yeah. finally finally here. I'm telling you, yeah, it's like conflict and. Conflicting uh, schedules between us, man. <laughs> and it's funny it's not, it's not like we don't see each other. We see each other multiple times a week because we do work in the same. Oh, I know, right? Way. You know, but hey, again, we're here. Uh, all right, Terry. So, so okay, talk to me. Tell me, tell me your background. Tell me about you. Uh, you know where you're from, et cetera, et cetera. Man. Uh... I grew up in a little small town in Louisiana. I don't know. Nobody's probably ever heard of it. It's called Maryville, Louisiana. It's a little small town, right? What's it called? East of Maryville. Oh, Maryville, okay. Maryville, yeah. The happiest place to live is what they call it. But <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's a little east of Jasper, Texas. Uh, grew up there. I don't know. Moved to Leesville, Louisiana. Lived there for a few years. Met my wife. Uh, online. Where else do we meet our wives at nowadays, man? It's all <laughs> online, man. <laughs> uh, yeah, and she was living over here in Dallas, and uh, she talked me into moving over here, which is probably, well, I say probably is probably one of the one of the the best things that's happened to me in my life, man. It's opened up a lot of doors, a lot. And you you you've been married, so okay, so she lived here. In, in, in Texas, and you were in Louisiana. You met. She talked to you to right. come over here, which is awesome. How long ago was that? Right. How long ago was that? I think we're going on eight years now. Oh, really? So, oh, you, you want to be, you, so you've been married for eight years, or were you dating for a while? Yeah. 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 Cool, man. Cool. Yeah. I, I don't know why I thought you would have been married longer. I don't know why. Um, well, I, I, was, I was married. Uh, didn't work out. Uh, you know how life is. We all go through it. Yeah, it happens. And, uh, it happens. Work out, but you know what? It, it, in the end, it's been a blessing. I'm not saying it's been a blessing because of the divorce, but it's been a blessing because it's set in, in motion uh, so many other opportunities in my life that's opened up beyond that. You know, I mean, uh, I still get to see my kids. I love my kids. Best thing ever happened to me. That's Hands right. down. Gift of God, man. Gift of God. Uh, wasn't for him, I wouldn't have anything. So. Uh, you gotta praise him first, man. All, all God. Amen to that. I love, I, lo I love to hear you say that. Uh, I know you are a man of God, uh, which that 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 is key. That is number one. Uh, you know that oh, yeah. we have yeah, to, we have to praise him above all else. So, how long have you been with Tech Stop? Then yeah, so you've been with Tech Stop. What eight, same thing? Seven, eight years. Uh, eight years. Yeah, well, we dated for about two years uh, before we got married. So, and then as soon as I moved over here, I started. So that was eight years ago. So all in all, wow. we've been together for about ten years. Okay, yeah. right, cool, cool, cool. And so, and you, and like I said, you've been with Tech Stop for eight years since. So you, you came over here, got the yeah, job yeah. with Tech Stop right away. Pretty much, with, yeah, pretty much well, like me. Actually, you, you, uh huh? Yeah, I moved over here because I got the job. You know, yeah. My wife, we we. <laughs> It's a kind of a funny story. Uh, 
my wife and I had been talking about going ahead and getting married. I was still living over there. I had my job. I was working for a contractor on a military base, making good money. You know, I didn't want to leave it back then. But uh, we went ahead, and, and one day my wife's like, hey, let's go get married. And I'm like, what? Are you serious? Like, just go get married. Because we're going to plan on having a wedding where everybody can see it and come to it. And, and it was like a spur of the moment thing. And she's like, then yeah, let's go get married. And I'm like, okay, sure, why not? You know, good woman, beautiful woman, smart, intelligent. I'm down. We go to the courthouse. We file paperwork. I think uh, the next week she comes down to visit. We go to the court. We, we, we actually go to the Justice of the Peace, a little town out in the middle of nowhere. Called, I looked up in the, and this is how long ago this has been. Kids probably don't know what the yellow pages are. <laughs> I actually looked at the yellow pages for a notary of the public <laughs> and found a notary. We called him and said, hey, can we get married today? She said, yep, come on out. We, we drove out to a double wide trailer. And uh, I think it was Slagle, Louisiana, is what people are going to say. It's Slagle, Louisiana. A little, little backwoods, little country town. We went in for the paperwork out, walked outside, got married, went home. And the funny thing is, we celebrated for a little bit, uh, had a little wine, you know, thought, oh, goodness, we're married. She went to bed. She got up at 3.30 in the morning because she was in nursing school at that time. And she had to be back in Dallas that morning. It's like 7 o'clock to take her final exam. <laughs> wow. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Talk, talk about point. commitment. Talk about commitment. <laughs> but, but you know, it, it, yeah, it sounds like a crazy story, but it's a beautiful story. It sounds like, it sounds like, yeah. you know, it, and you guys, have, you know, and now together, eight years later, you know, so it's, it's awesome, right. man. That's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I started I mean, with. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, no. Go, 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 go. go. No, I was, I was going to say, me and you never would have met if it weren't for my wife. You know, I wouldn't have any of the friends I have. I would have never have stepped foot on a, on a, a movie studio or anything without her. So I, I, I give it all to her. I give her a hard time, but she knows I love her and I, and, and she's, <laughs> she's everything. You know what I mean? That's part of a duty of a husband is to give our wives a little bit of a hard time, man. That's you, and plus a little you bit. You can't of time. let them get away. No, 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 you can't. You can't. I'm always bothering my wife and my mother in law. You know, I'm always oh, yeah. bothering I'm always bothering my mother in law. She she lives with us, so I'm always bothering her. I always oh, have yeah. a good time with her. Um yeah, but what I was gonna tell you that yeah, I'm I'm the same way. I started with Tech Stop people. I came to Tech Stop. I came to Dallas because I had a job already with Tech Stop. You know, yeah. So that's how I, that's how I end up here, and because you know I'm from Florida, you see my four my Miami Dolphins stuff in my office, and oh, uh, we, we need to talk about that, man. I have to see that stuff every time I come in there. <laughs> I know it, it burns people's eyes. Why? Why? <laughs> Hey, I can't say I, what, man. No, you can't. I'm still with the Saints. I'm still with the Saints. I leave the state, still my team. When they go out, then I go for the Cowboys. <laughs> I'm the same way. When the Dolphins are out, I, I pick the Cowboys, but they lose the next day. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I reach in the back and pull out my Dallas Cowboys shirts and stuff. I got stuff behind all the rest of the clothes. <laughs> what made you get into acting, bro? What, 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 what did you, how did you decide that? Did, did something just pop in? Is it something you always wanted to do or? No, man. Back in, back in high school, I did drama. I did a lot of plays on stage and stuff. And, and I still remember the very first play I was in. It was called The Case of the Punjabi Ruby. And <laughs> the very first play I ever did, I got the lead role as the, as the detective. Really? Yeah, and it was it was about an hour long play, and I had a lot of lines. I mean, pages of lines. And I was after I got it, I'm reading these lines. I'm like, man, there's no way I'm gonna be able to memorize all this stuff, man. There's no way. But you know what? I did it. Somehow I did it. And man, when I got on stage and I started acting, and I got in my character, man, it just took me to a different place. I was out of myself, and and that's that's what. I love about acting, man. That's what, and, and if you ask any actor, they're all probably going to tell you the same thing. It's not for an hour. It's not for a full day. It's not for two days. You get to leave reality, 
you get to step outside your own reality for just that short amount of time and become someone else, act out someone else's life, and forget about the rest of, of, of your of your shortcomings and, and, and the stress of life. You just I, I just block it out. And I become a different person, man. I, I love it. So ever since that you did that play, you walked, you said, Man, there's something I, I would like to do then, huh? Oh yeah, 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 definitely. And, and I remember uh my my teacher at the time was Miss Corbin and uh after the play was over, she came up to my mom, and I remember staying by my mom. She's like, oh, you did a good job. I loved it. You did such a good job. You know, of course, if I did a bad job, my mom still would said, hey, you did such a good job. But, you know, that's what moms are there for. But she came up to my mom, and she said, he's a pretty good actor. He need, It would be awesome if he became an actor one day. This is back in, like, the sixth grade, seventh grade, man. And that, that stuck in my head. Every, and I still remember that. I can still remember her face saying that. I'm like... One day it's gonna happen. Have you, seen, have you seen have you seen Thomas Corbin? I you have tell her, hey, it's happening. It's happening. I need to. I need to see her. Well, I don't know because she was she was only up in eight, so to be honest with you, she may not be alive. She might not be around. She might yeah, not be around. Yeah, yeah. But, but it would be but, cool. But it's cool that you remember and, 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 and those encouraging words stick with us. Oh yeah. You know? Yeah. You know, As a child, it's, you know, it's so important. It's so important yeah. because you can easily be torn down, but encouraging words are there also. Oh yeah, it can pick you up and more. Oh, no, man. Yeah, and and, and 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 I don't want to get off subject, but that's a that's a big core value of mine is is, is to I guess treat people like you want to be treated. You know Absolutely. what I mean? Talk to people like you want to be talked to. Uh, Value of, value others' opinions, but also ask that others will value your opinions the way you would value your, theirs. You know what I mean? If if we could all do that in life, then we would. This this world would be the best place ever. That is the golden rule. Jesus taught that. Yes, yes, he did. It's in the Bible. It's, it's biblical. We call we're gonna call ourselves Christians. We got you. Know, we gotta follow the golden rule, and that is the golden rule. Treat others how you want to be treated. Definitely, yeah. man. Definitely. So, I, so absolutely, I, absolutely. Um, and, okay, so how how did you besides uh, the, the 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 plays and school and all that stuff? How did you get into act, actually professional acting, whether small roles or uh, or commercials? I know you did commercials. I know you done yeah. uh, uh, back background like like extras and all that stuff. How yeah. did you get into all that? Well, the, the funny thing is, is um, I it, it I kind of forgotten about acting. I got all my life, you know, kids, family takes over. You know, those dreams you had back in the day, they kind of fade away. Become a thought that hangs out in the back of your head. Maybe every now and then you watch a movie, you're like, man, I'd love to do that. But it, it kind of disappeared. It, and, and one day, I was actually at work, driving down the road, and I hear this advertisement on the radio. It says, if you'd like to be a background in a movie, uh, sign up for mycastingfile.com. And I'm like, oh, cool. I was like, I never thought about that. So I go on there. It's like $40 a year. You sign up. I signed up, took some pictures here in the house, uploaded them on my profile, went on there. And, and, and the movie that was that the big one at the time then, which was a year ago, year and a half ago, I guess it was, was uh, Lawman Bass Reefs. That was the, the one that was being filmed over in Fort Worth, uh, Stephenville, uh, that area. And uh, I'm like, man, you know what? I'm going to put in for this. Chances are I'm not going to get it. My wife's like, go ahead and do it. Let's see what happens. And I'll be damned for like a week later, they send me a year booked uh, as background in, in Stephenville, which is my actual first one was. And I'm looking at her like, no way, man. I'm like, I actually got, I'm actually going to be on a TV show. <laughs> So yeah, That's so and, cool. Yeah, and then I kept, I kept sending them in, sending them in, and I kept getting other roles or say roles, but got other background, other background. Man, I'm on set, and like my fantasies of, of acting. You know what? What was a dream at one time when I was like six years old? Here I am. I'm standing in Stephenville, which down downtown Stephenville now, brick pavement. It now looks like a western town. 
It was amazing. It was so cool, man. They, they, they hauled in truckloads of dirt, red clay, filled the streets in, hit signs, you know. <clears throat> the guys redid the buildings and all that. It look, It literally looked like you were walking down the street in a western, in, in the 1800s. And then you got all this film equipment and you've got these green screens and you got all, they've got the streets blocked off. And I'm like, I'm like looking around like starstruck at, at, at just the, the surroundings. I'm like, this is, how, how is this a real thing? Like how do people get paid for this, man? <laughs> you know? And man, it lit a fire like that. And I'm like, you know what? I said, I'm doing this. I said, I'm in it. I'm doing it. And, and man, I haven't stopped yet. I've always wanted to do something like that, you know? I'm not saying about seeing any lines. And well, by the way, have, did you say any lines when you got that one, no, no. or was it literally just background? Just they background. Say background yeah. You're just in the back, maybe sitting down, having a cup of coffee or eating or something, yeah. right? Yeah. Or walking by, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, and, and it was no all line. Kind of, well, yeah. You know the, the ads, the assistant directors and stuff. They would they would come by and say, "Hey, stay right here." Uh, when we yell, background, start going. Start, start walking, start uh, pantomiming, you know, which is a lot of what we did. A hundred percent of what you do is background pantomime. And uh, I know a lot of people know what pantomime is. It's, it's, you act, you know, you act like it. I mean, you, even being background, you still have to act a little bit, you know what I mean? To make it look believable. Uh, yeah. No words coming out, but you're, you're talking to somebody or you're walking with somebody and talking with them, you know, and, and, and they would have us doing that. And, and the first time, uh, when we were watching uh, Lawman, uh, the Bass Reef show on TV, there was a scene, opening scene of one of them, and I'm watching this this horse drawn carriage come by, and when it moves, I'm standing like right there. I'm like, oh my gosh, look at that. There I am. I'm on TV. <laughs> it was so awesome, man. You can't get I bet it was. <laughs> I, I, I bet it was. And you know what? It's funny because. It's like I I had known you already for over a year and I did not know that you were in that you were doing these things. Yeah, yeah. Well I mean I you know, when, I, I first, I when I first started coming over just to get packages, it was like, Hey man, how you doing? Let me get my package. But but after a while we start you know, man, you start to talk and, and share our interests and stuff and, and now when I come over there I, it's like 30 minute thing, I'm like, oh shoot, man, I gotta get back over to the shop, man. I gotta quit talking, <laughs> you know. And I, I mean, that's how I found out you even did the show, was we get to know each other, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I think, I think what I caught on was when I actually saw you on the commercial for Brookshire, which are which I was, yeah, yeah. I go, yeah, I go, well, wait a second, I know him, <laughs> I go, yeah, <laughs> <I'm freaking scary."> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was. They actually got that, that commercial through my casting file as well. Yeah, they, they put it in there, and, and I I sent in for it. And I'm thinking, you know, I, my beard was a lot bigger then. Like bushy or something that. like yeah. They're not going to they're not gonna call me, man. I got this big bushy. They're going to put this thing in the commercial. They did. And and at the end of the commercial, you can see me walking out. I'm like, oh, I'm on a commercial. <laughs> That's so cool, man. That's very cool. Yeah. And like I told yeah, you, I've always, I've always wanted to do something like that, and I, I never known how. I, I've always been kind of scared. I've always been kind of nervous. Even doing this one, I'm doing right now. I've, this is out of my character. This is out of my comfort zone. You know. Dude, I on, guess, I, I guess, as you do it a little bit more, you get more comfortable. Oh, I, yeah. Well, I'm one. I'm, <laughs> I've never really been too. I've never gotten embarrassed too much. I guess maybe it's where I'm from because a lot of the guys and stuff over there where I'm from, you don't. You're kind of outspoken. You don't you don't get embarrassed easy. So to me, it's it's if somebody laughs at me, I don't care. What what's it gonna? What, it's not gonna affect me. You know, if somebody makes fun of me or laughs at me or calls me names, it don't bother me because I've got other things in life I have to worry about than somebody not thinking I'm cool. You know what I mean? <laughs> I've got my kids, my wife. I've, I've got bills to pay. And, and that's kind of like the way I live every day, and kind of like when I go on set or, or you know, something like that. I mean, that's kind of the mindset I have. I'm doing what I like. As long as I'm happy, my wife and my kids are happy. Hey, life's great, man. What? 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 Uh, 
what ha have you done anything with lines or yeah. have yeah. have you okay what, what what have you done uh i've got there's a show i think there actually i sent a message today and said it was going to be done in may i did a it's a horror <laughs> kind of like a horror movie called bud uh i was killed in that one <laughs> it it was you look good for that guy <laughs> i know right uh <laughs> The first movie actually I had ever done that I had speaking lines. I, I'm not gonna lie, I was a little nervous. I, I was a little nervous, knowing that I had to have lines and like this guy has invested money in this show and you know I want to make it good. I want to do the best I can do. I was a little nervous, but I made it through and uh, it is actually coming out in in May. Now I don't okay. know if it's coming out on TV, but it definitely will be on uh, DVD. Uh, but the movie's called Bud. I don't know if you look at my. Uh, my Facebook page, but it's on there. I'm usually kind of reposting, like, hey, it's getting closer, it's getting closer, you know. But uh, it, when it comes out, if it's only on DVD, I'll pop it in the in, in the in the tower over here, and I'll cut a couple of a uh, couple of uh, segments out, and hopefully I can post it. Uh, it's got it's not a kid friendly movie. Let's put it that way. <laughs> okay. I, uh, yeah. I, I, I say some choice words in there. Film? Where was that film? That was filmed here in Texas, also, right? Where was it filmed? I'm sorry, you cut out that for a second. Where was it filmed? Was it filmed here in Texas as well? Was, oh was yeah, it, it was actually in Miles, Texas, way out west Texas. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It was a little town called Miles, Texas, and and, okay. and it was about almost a five-hour drive to get there. And man, we you get out past. Uh, Fort Worth area and all that, two miles past, I mean, uh, yeah, about 10, 15 miles past that, everything flattens out and it just turns into like desert and hills and tumbleweeds. I'm like, where in the world? I'm like thinking in my head, like, man, this place is like in the middle of nowhere. And it literally was. Like you're driving, you're driving, and then there's a little town. Whoop, right there, no nowhere. But the guys, the producer on that show, uh, Shane Bradford, he's the one that actually called me in and and uh you know set set up the meeting we did a little uh face to face on the phone uh we talked a little while i sent him a, a an audition he said man we love it he's like we want you to come in and uh that all of it all it's, it's history now it, it's almost done wow and how long did you how long did you film for how long was the filming was it a whole day thing or was it i was there i was there for a weekend or well, about four days my my part was about four days. It actually took them a couple of months uh, on and off. You know, they would film. You know, because these guys have to work. They have jobs. You know, none of us are, are big time actors. You know, so and they knew that. So they would film a week with this guy and this guy. Then they would film the next week with this guy and this guy until they got everything together and they pieced it together. Um, one of the cool things about that movie is uh, I don't know if you know who Leslie Dean is, but she's actually. In the 80s and 90s, she was kind of a big, big time actor. She had a band. Uh, back in the day, she toured with, uh, uh, what's his name, uh, Marilyn Manson and uh -huh. a couple of other bands back in the day. But she was actually the lead on Friday the 13th. I'm sorry, not Friday the 13th. Not Marilyn Elm Street. Oh, Freddy's no. Dead. If you ever happen to watch oh, okay. that, the blonde that's in that movie. So that was pretty cool, yeah. I got to sit on, on on set and hang out with her and talk to her. And she's a really cool lady. Down to her, laid back. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, and I don't know if you want me to say negative words on here or whatever, but the, the, <laughs> man, I, the first time I met her, I come walking up and they're just laying. I, it, it, you know, she doesn't. Nobody looks like they do when they're on TV. Makeup, everything else. You don't. You don't look like you. So when I first saw her, she had this hat on that said, uh, show me your butthole. <laughs> and I'm like, what is this? Who is this lady with this hat, man? I'm like, that's crazy. And then we kind of walked around a while, and then and one of the guys was like, oh, yeah, there's Leslie Dean. And I was like, oh, oh, that's Leslie Dean. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, it was oh, kind of funny. Oh, man. Oh, um, uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh-huh. I've got a we've got I got another movie called uh, Porch Pirates. I've got I was one of the lead actors in it. 
Uh, oh, it's cool. Out, it's Christmas. It's a Christmas movie. Yeah, yeah. It's it's more of a the guy that does these is more of a Christian based guy. He does a lot of Christian movies, uh, which I like doing because um, I know this is going to be one of those movies that you can sit down at Christmas time, and I can sit down with the kids at Christmas time. We get the tree up, get the movie on. We can watch it. You know, it's a wholesome down earth movie. Uh, no cursing, zero. They don't. You know, family movie. So uh, yeah, it, it, the the plot of that one is kind of uh, we're what, what you call you know what they a porch pirate is somebody that runs up on the porch and they steal packages and run off with them. That's yeah. what we're doing. We're dressed up in a Santa outfit. You know, we got a, pa- a patch on our eye like a pirate, and and throughout the show we're we're running up on these people's houses, which we we talk to them and you know walk knocked on the door and said, hey, we're filming a movie. Uh, you care if we, we put some of these packages up here and, and, and use your house in the film? Everybody was like, yeah, yeah, man, yeah, it'd be cool to see our house in the movie, you know? And some of the kids, I know one house, one of the kids had a bicycle, little girl, she was like five or six. She had a bicycle and a scooter that was sitting outside. She was like, can I put my bicycle and scooter outside on, on the tree so that when the movie comes out, we can see my, my bicycle and tricycle in the movie? And we're like, the, 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 the producers were like, yeah. Bring it out, put it up on the tree. So yeah, that was pretty funny. But uh, yeah, it, it has its, it's one of those where it starts out like really funny. And then the end, it, it gets a little more, I'm not going to kill it, I'm not going to spoil it, but it gets a little serious at the end. But it's still, it's still going to be like a wholesome, set down uh, family movie. So I, I, I'm really looking forward for that one to come out. So I can watch it with the kids, uh, you know, fire up the fireplace, turn the Christmas tree on, and just sit back and have some hot cocoa and, and watch the movie. So it's going to be awesome. That's cool. I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to that too. I, I do like a little a little horror flick. I look. I, I do like horror flicks. I know a lot of Christians say, oh, they frown upon. I like horror. I do like oh, horror. I'm not, I'm, I'm not any less of a Christian. I love Jesus. So yeah. I like, I, I do like horror films too. So I'm looking forward to Bud. I'm looking forward to that Christmas movie. I'm looking forward to the to any of any, cause I know you've been on awesome. You've done other, you told me you did other series, yeah. right? Uh, yeah, yeah. I was, well, there's another movie I'm on. It's called Ten Toes Down. Uh, right. Director Bennett Embry. Uh, he, he, uh, and, and A.D. Scott, which he's, uh, he's an actor here in Dallas. He's, he's pretty well known. He's, he's got a couple of pretty good movies out. Um, I, I sent him, um, I saw the, the, there were, Shooting the movie, and I sent AD Scott a message one day on Facebook. And I was like, "Hey, man, uh, I see you put the movie out. Uh, I do background work sometimes. I'd be interested." And he sent me back one and said, "Hey, we're shooting next weekend. You want to come out?" I'm like, "Yeah, shoot ya." He said, "Can you, you have a nurse's outfit?" I'm like, "Man, my wife's a nurse." I'm like, "I got this," <laughs> you know. So yeah, I showed up and I was in one of the one of the the major scenes in that one. I'm a, I'm actually just background, but I have. I'll, I'm sure I'll have a lot of scenes because I was one of the main nurses in the hospital, walking around doing stuff, talking to everybody, and, and that kind of thing. So, so that one's coming out soon too. I think they're almost done with it, so it'll be out in about another month or so. That's awesome, man. That's so cool. Who who has been your favorite actors? Uh, you know, who who who's been your inspiration as far as acting? Uh, and there's so many good actors, but to be yeah, honest with you. But yeah, yeah, there is. I mean, you can't, it's hard to pinpoint one day and say, oh, this is the guy. But if I want to say who um, I look up to as an actor, it's Matthew McConaughey, one of my favorite actors ever, man. This guy is, he's so laid back, man. He's so cool. He's so suave. Everything that comes out of his mouth makes you just feel all calm and relaxed. <laughs> and know? he loves Jesus also. He, he does. Jesus. He does. Big time. He's a big time preacher. He loves Jesus. He loves yes. Jesus. He does. Uh, his I, man, and and you know what? I've always liked him before. I always liked the guy. Um, because first off, he's an amazing actor. The guy can yeah, yeah. roll, and he 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 just overpowers all the other actors in the show. Man, he, he he's awesome. Uh, he he's a big believer in God and Jesus, big time. And if you ever watch any of his motivational speeches or him on stage, every every few other sentences. He's either thanking God or he's making a remark that this wouldn't be possible without God and Jesus in his life. You know, and, and which none of it would be. 
accepting. Ex- I remember him accepting an award. Uh, I forgot. I, I forgot what, what what which one it was. Uh, yeah, I it was, I was on the Academy. Choice or or People's Choice. Or something. He was yeah, out yeah. there. He, he was thanking the Lord. He was thanking God. Yeah. He was he publicly, which nowadays is frowned upon. Yeah, but he was not ashamed, and yeah. I love that. I yeah. love that. So important. Yeah. So important. Yeah. And, you know, and I, I don't, me and my wife used to go to church over Sunday. We, we spent time in church, and I've gotten out. We've moved and moved and moved a couple of times since I've been here. We've gotten out of church, and we always keep saying, we need to get back in church. And Sunday rolls around, and we're like, okay, we'll get back to the church. Uh, wait. Uh, you know, i got this to do and this to do, and we don't do it. But even though I'm not sitting in that front pew at a church house, the good Lord knows I believe in him. He knows I love him, and he knows I thank him. All the time for everything that happens. Anything that good that happens to me, and everything bad that happens to me, I thank him for it. Because he's not going to give us all the good without the bad, man. You can't have it both ways. You're going to have to go through the bad times sometimes in order to appreciate the good times. It's part of life. And you can't blame I'm the good Lord for that. You know. Amen. And I'm gonna send you the I'm gonna send you the message that we just did this past weekend. It's awesome, and it talks it talked about it talked about the storm where Jesus was sleeping in the in the in the in the boat. He was sleeping in the ship in the boat, and the Sea of Galilee with all the disciples were all freaking out, and they wake him wow. up, and they wake Jesus up. And they, Don't you care if we drown and this and that? Right, and the the ma- the main point of the message is that Jesus is in there with us. He's there with yeah. us. Right. And, yeah. and the storm didn't wake him up. The cries of the disciples wake him up. Right. Yeah, the exactly. storm doesn't scare him. The storm doesn't freak him out. What what wakes him up or what will keep is us crying out to him. And that's what he yeah. wants. Yeah. So yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna I'm gonna share that I'm gonna share that message I'm gonna send it to you I'm gonna yeah, send it to you. Yeah, yeah. Who who is I was gonna leave this question for last, but I'm gonna ask you. And again, this is gonna be a tough question. If if there was a, if you were to create a Mount Rushmore of actors, who would be your Mount Rushmore of actors? I've been asking this question for different things for different people in music. I've asked you for it already in boxing. In, in 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 for you in your opinion, who will be your Mount Rushmore of actors? It could be past, it could be current, it could be total mix. Uh, well, you know, Matthew McConaughey is going to be on there, of course. Mm-hmm. He'll probably at least be right in the middle, or maybe maybe on the other end over there. Because they I'm saying he's a great actor, but he's not. He's not the one who's inspired movie and film. Uh, well, no, I, but this, this is, is your, this is, is your, your 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 Mount Rushmore. Your Mount Rushmore, and again, there's no right or wrong. Your Mount Rushmore might be different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, this, yeah, that's, yeah, that's that's what I'm saying. He could definitely be on there to me because he he's done some of the most amazing films ever. Uh, and and one that would definitely have to be on there is Charlie Chapman. I don't know. If, I know you know who Charlie Chapman is. The Silent. You can't. Have, he started movies, man. He was the I beginning love that you mentioned him. <laughs> you can't have anything without this guy, man. He helped start it. Uh, and then I would have to say, uh, oh my goodness, what's his what's his name? I've drawn a blank, man. Uh, he, oh, he was on Lonesome Dove. Uh, the, the two main actors on Lonesome Dove. I can't remember their names. Uh, uh, well, okay, I think one of them, Clint Eastwood, he would definitely be on there. Clint Eastwood, he's, a, he's an old school actor. Uh, I used to remember on Saturday mornings going to watch cartoons, and, and my dad would go in there and, and turn on, like, Hang em High or something, and, and I'm like, dude, I was going to watch cartoons, and then I'd sit back and watch, you know, uh, 1960s Western with him, you know, instead. That was my, that dad, was my dad's favorite. That was my dad's favorite, uh, besides John Wayne. That was my dad's favorite actor was Clint Eastwood. Yeah. Hang Him High, by far, the greatest, yeah. greatest Western, in my opinion, greatest Western of all time. 
hang him high. Yeah. His Everybody revenge, else. Yeah. His revenge was amazing. Yeah, it was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. It was great. That's still a great movie. Sometimes when it comes on, if it's on, like if I'm flipping through, I'm like, oh, it'll be like at the end or in the middle. I'll still go ahead and watch it. Cause, I mean, you can, I could, I watch it so many times as a kid, I can pick it up in the middle and, and you know, and just kind of remember the beginning and kind of follow it on through, you know what I mean? Uh, and then there was, I, there was another one by him. He used to watch uh, Pell Rider. Pell Rider, that's one. Of, that's my favorite Western by him. Uh, uh, I don't know if you know what Pell Rider is. One where he's, he's no, a I'm preacher. Just, I'm... And, Okay. Oh, movie, man. Well, he's a pre. Okay. Okay. Yeah, he, he's a preacher. He, you know, he's done some bad things in his past, and he gave all that up, become a preacher, and then he moves to this town, and uh, you know he's gonna try and open a church up and all this, but you know you got the the gangs and all that that come in and cause him trouble, and 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 he ends up having to go back to the bad ways to protect all the people, and you know, and, and in one scene where he reaches up and pulls his pulls the the white cloth off, and you're like, oh. <laughs> get serious, man. <laughs> you know? Yeah, but yeah, and definitely him. And uh, what is what is the the other guy? Oh my goodness, I cannot. Why can I remember his name? Uh, is he alive? Is he, is he, is oh, he no, alive? no, he's still alive. Yeah, yeah, he's alive. Uh, I would say blown away, but you probably had to, I don't know if you know the movie. Oh, away. Uh, Jeff Bridges. No, he was the the bad guy in it. He was the Irish guy who was born by up. Oh my god, he's my, one of my favorite actors. I cannot remember his name. Ain't that something? I but him, that guy. Okay. okay. <laughs> I was in my head a bit. I'm like, oh yeah, that guy. Yeah, that would that would be my four. I would put up there, man. That, that, that's, that's cool. That's how you 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 your your four your four are, and, and by the way, Charlie Chaplin. Many people don't know this. One of his first films was a horror film. Yeah. <laughs> One of his first films was a horror film. It was a silent film. I didn't film. know that. It was a, he did a horror film. Check it out. Look, look. I forgot. The, I don't know the name. I forgot the name of it. But it was a horror film. Really? Yeah. 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 He did, did a horror. Film. He did a horror film. Yeah. That was one of his first films. Yeah. It had to all be because there was no sound. So. Right. Right. <laughs> but it's funny how you pick. Him from the early, the beginning of, of, of motion picture, then you pick somebody in the from the middle, then somebody in the late, and yeah, oh, hey, that's 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 very cool, very very cool. Yeah. Um, and, what's and the if, further? Oh. If somebody, what, what was I was getting a little order was uh, that the guy put a book out called Green Lights, and I wasn't listening to it. I'm like, I don't like audio books. It, to me, if I'm going down the road, I want to hear some jams. I want to, you know, relax, drive down the road. She's like, you got to listen to it. Man, I listen to it. He 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 opens himself up to, to like, his most vulnerable times in life. And, 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 I, and I watched him actually talk about it with, with somebody on a podcast. And they're like, why would you tell everybody these deepest, darkest secrets of yours? I mean, why would you put yourself out there like that? And he's like, because it's life. He said, all the stuff that happened to me in that book, I can almost guarantee you has happened to other people in real life. They just don't talk about it. You know, and he's like, and if I'm going to put a book out and I want to inspire somebody, I want people to kind of know it's okay to be human. It's okay to error. It's okay to fall uh, off the ledge every now and then. But you got, and, and, and like he said, man, I love that dude's voice. It's like, but you got to keep going, man. You got to get back up on that ledge again. You got to get up there and you got to stay there. You know? So if you want to listen to a good book, good book, man. Green lights. And, and it, it's important for, for people like him to, to do that because he's human. And we, we know he's human. But some people put these superstars on a pedestal. You know, and not just superstars, even pastors. Yeah. You know, they said that, well, they, these people don't make mistakes. These people, no, they're human. They put one, they put their pants on one leg at a time. Exactly. You know? and, yeah. And, 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 you know, they, they breathe the same way you do. They drink water. Yeah. They, 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 you know, they, they, they're under the same sun, same stars as you and I, you know. Yeah. So, they're human beings, and they go through stuff. Yeah, 
And, 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 you know, I noticed you said that back home uh, when I was going to church uh, a lot. You know, it's been it's been years back. We had a, 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 a pastor back then. His name, uh, I used to call him Pastor Brian. That was, that was his name. He, he, would, um, he was probably one of the most truthful pastors I'd ever seen because he, he would come to Sunday service and, and he would stand up there and he'd say, you know, I had a bad weekend. You know, uh, this happened to me and this happened to me and, and I fell short this weekend. And, you know, I, 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 I tried my best to live up to the Lord. He said, but even myself, as a man of the, of the Lord who's chosen to take on this task of speaking the Lord's uh, word to you guys, he said, I fell short. And I just want everybody to know that it's okay. If I, if I can do it, you can do it. It's okay to fail. It's okay to get depressed. It's okay to cry. It's okay to, to let yourself go every now and then. And that, that's what I loved about him because he wasn't, it wasn't a, it wasn't a sermon per se. It was more of a, a reflection of himself through us and, and through life, you know, and, and, and that to me, that makes a really good preacher. If, if he can, portray himself as not the holy one and, and you know you know what i mean everybody sees the preacher and yep. the preacher is preacher you know and you're like you got kid because we're a kid blah 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 but i love those type of preachers man down they, to earth and they're they relatable put themselves on a pedestal, you know? they're relatable they're relatable these are preachers those are the type of preachers that are relatable yes yeah i love know. The, my pastors, the pastors, yeah. uh, we have five pastors, five teaching pastors at our church. So we have five campuses. So we have five teaching pastors. All, each and every single one of them are like that. They're, 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 awesome. they're, they're an open book. They're transparent. Hey, yeah. I'm yeah. jacked up just like you are. Good, because I need yeah. to know that you are not perfect. Or you don't think you're perfect. I know you're not perfect. I need to know that you know that you're not perfect. Right. And they let us know that they're not perfect. Yeah. You know, as long as they're not under, right. you know, as long as they're not having adultery with the secretary or anything like that. <laughs> you know, as long as they're not committing right. adultery yeah. or, something, or, yeah. or doing drugs or something like that, they're going to make mistakes. They're going to they're gonna right. get upset. They're going to, they, they, they're going to, might say a four letter word that, you know, every now and then. And, we're wacker, we're all human. We're human. So Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, I mean, as long as we're not knocking off on a lesson on Saturday night and coming and preaching on Sunday, good man. <laughs> you know. Um, let me ask you, what does a day of filming look like? A day of filming when you go to you know, what's well first of all, what's the furthest you ever gone out to film? Was it that place that you said it was about six hours away? In the middle of nowhere, was yeah. that the furthest? Yeah, it that, was? that was the furthest. Yeah, yeah, that's the furthest that I've actually went. Not the, the the show now that I'm, that I'm working on every now and then, Landman, it's filmed right there in uh, in uh, Fort Worth. So it's about an hour and twenty minutes, maybe, from the house. Yeah. yeah. And if it's a six o'clock call, I might get up at like three o'clock in the morning to get ready and get my clothes because uh, this is more of a modern day show so I can bring my own clothes, what I want to wear, what I'm comfortable wearing to go on set. Uh, usually, you know, we show up this, and don't get me wrong, this is a large production. So Taylor Sheridan has a lot of money. So he can throw a lot of money out there on these shows. But you show up, man, they've got this big spread of breakfast food. Scrambled eggs, biscuits, sausage, uh, gravy, oatmeal, fruits. Mm. All in this big tent, and there's like 25 or 30 of the of the other background actors and stuff in there, and and we all come in. You know, we're tired early in the morning. We come in, we get us a plate of food. Nobody talks. We sit down, we eat. They have coffee, drinks, juice, whatever you want, water. You know, and, and everybody gets a little energized, and, and then you know, for an hour and a half, two hours, we're just sitting around, waiting and waiting and waiting. Then the the, the AD. The assistant director, he'll come in and say, "Hey, okay, guys, uh, we're, everybody's getting close. They're, they're getting the, the set together." He said, "In a minute, I'll start calling you out by your roles." Like uh, the last one, I was what they call a, I was a cafe patron. 
Uh, so, you know, he'd call out, the, you know, uh, the, the cooks. I need the cooks to step out. And I need the waiters and waitresses to step out. And, you know, I need the, the, the porch, you know, the, the cafe, um, I'm sorry, the cafe uh, patrons to step out. And then we all load on this big, it's a big bus, man, like a Greyhound bus. We all load on by section. They drive us from there, drive us down. We get on set, pull us in, they unload us, they put us in another room. Then we might sit in the other room all together for another two hours, maybe three hours. Then they'll come in and they'll say, okay, you, 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 and you, let's go. We want you on the set. So we'll go in, say if myself gets chosen on that one, I'll go in. I might do an hour and a half, two hours, three hours of filming in there. And, and you do uh, the same take over and over and over. You might do it eight, nine, ten times. You have to walk mm -hmm. the same way. You have to talk. You have to, to mind the same way. You have to take the same path through the restaurant or, or whatever scene you're in. And you have to remember exactly what you did because if they switch, you know, and they'll do five of the cameras at this angle. Then they'll take the cameras and they'll move it to this side. They'll do five at this angle. Then they'll move the cameras around the other side. They'll do five more at that angle. So you have to remember, like, you, okay, I walked across this crack in the floor. Or I looked or I stopped and talked to this person or me and this person talked. And you have to do the same thing over and over and over again for like 15 takes. Gets repetitive big time. But if you don't do the same thing over and over again and they go to edit this, you're like, oh man, what? This guy walked like that direction and just ruined the whole, you know, five takes of film, man. Like, and I had to cut that scene because you didn't do what you were supposed to do. So, but these people are putting a lot of money in this and you don't get paid a lot as a background guy. You might get paid 120 bucks a day. You know, you don't get paid a lot, but. Pretty yeah. good though, and then and, and then plus all the food that you told me you told me. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And you get you get you, well. You get you told me you get fed breakfast. I'm assuming you get lunch and dinner if you're there all day, right? What well, yeah, we get lunch uh, especially. So usually, I don't know. They like start a scene and it takes 15 takes, and it's two o'clock by the time you're done. Then you take lunch at two. But lunch is the same way, man. It's. One day they called out uh, uh, these barbecue guys. They brought this big, huge barbecue grill out. We had barbecue chicken, brisket, uh, hamburgers, baked beans, potato salad, salad, fruit, fruit, you know, uh, cakes, pudding. And we're talking good stuff, too. Not, not like the kind you just dump out of a box. We're talking, these guys made this stuff with, like, cream cheese. And, oh, man, it's good. I mean, you Sign it, me it, up. Sign, know, right? sign me up, dude. <laughs> listen, I know it's hard life. You pay, you get paid what 100 bucks? You said 120 bucks, yeah. even you get paid 75 bucks. Plus yeah, all that food, dude. Yeah. That's that's good. Yeah. And then on top of it, you get to do something cool about that. Yeah. On top of it, you get to do something cool, yeah. Something you look you back know? on old and, and you're, you're you know, and you're like, oh man, I remember that back in the day when I was a young buck. You know? I want to oh, yeah. do that. So yeah, so definitely, I know you, you you gave me the link of where to sign up, and so I, you had given it to me the other day. I'm gonna definitely, I'm gonna talk to my wife. Oh, yeah. My wife, I told my wife about it. She was, let's do it, let's do it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I just, cool. I just recently, uh, I went to act, uh, an acting school. It was like, how long was that? Like six months, I think it was. I was in this acting school. It's all online now. Everything you do is online. You know, you don't really show up to do anything in person anymore. But, uh, yeah, I just graduated from it like two weeks ago. And now I have an agent. So, I don't know. Oh, so, now you, have, you have, now you have an agent. So, now, yeah. okay. Okay, so, you're, so you so you just answered the question or somewhat of a question that I was going to ask. What are your plans? What do you, what, how far are you planning on taking this? So, you're actually looking to a career. If you have an agent, you're looking to a career. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and the deal is, I want to, uh, I mean, I'm not going to say I'm going to leave TikTok. You know what I mean? I'm not, I don't, I don't, I'm not going to say that. But if the opportunity presents itself, yeah, come on. But I at least want to do my other two years and get, you know, get. I want to get vested. 
in, in my job for security. You know what I mean? Of course. But right now what I'm looking for is is hopefully to land a couple of commercials. Uh man, some of these some of these commercials pay like a thousand, fifteen hundred dollars a pop, man. Really? Oh yeah. Now, if you could do like two commercials a month, like we're talking like uh Ford commercials or Nissan or like Progressive or you know, one of these places. Yeah. Uh, some of them goes up some of them commercials can go up to three or four thousand dollars. Now you have to be I'm not saying I'm good enough to make it, but I'm gonna try. And if yeah. I happen to land with them, man, that's like that's like a payday all over again, man. So and, and I'm concentrating more on, on that right now. But mm-hmm. if they were to say, Hey, they want you to be in this T V series and they're gonna pay you thirty thousand dollars a pop for ten episodes, I'm not gonna turn it down. You know, absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, I'm Absolutely not. but yeah, I'm. This is something I'm hoping that I can build, and it's going to take years. I'm not. I'm just getting into this, man. Like just, just scraping the surface. Some of these guys are these big time actors. I would never in a million years ever even could imagine being on their same level. But they started somewhere. Yeah, they did. They started they did. somewhere. You know, they did. They most of them are normal people, and, and I'm not going to hold out. Uh, hold out or, or belittle myself and say I can't do it because I, in my heart, I'm going to keep telling myself, you can do this, you can do this, you can do this. Well, if you, if you, limit, if you limit yourself, if you tell yourself you can't do it, then that definitely you can't do it. But if oh, you, yeah, believe yeah. In yourself, yeah. you believe in yourself, you keep, if you keep at it, you keep getting better and better and better and better, it's like, you know, the more you do it, the better you get. Yeah, yeah, man. And, and your first step in failure in life or anything you do in life is the second you start doubting yourself, man. That very second where you go, I can't do this, man. I can't. That right there is, is the little tiny snowball about this big around that's going to be this big around by the time it hits the bottom. Anytime, I'm, any, and I've always tried to do that in my life. Every, you know, I get down like everybody else does. I know you probably have times in your life where you're just like, why? Why, man? Why does this happen to me? But you got to step, take a step back. Anytime I feel bad, man, I'm like, you know what? I got a, I got a beautiful, blonde-headed, blue-headed, blue-eyed wife at the house. I got five now, three of my own, two-step kids. I got five beautiful kids. They're all amazing. There's not a day that I can tell you that it's went by in the last 20 to 30 years of my life where I've never had a meal every day. When it's cold outside, I come home and I turn the heater on. I sit down in front of the TV. I watch TV. I have, you know, not the nicest vehicles in the world, but I have a vehicle I can get in and go to work and come back. It's not one of them. Somebody's going to be like, oh, man, look at that car. They might be like, oh, man, look at that car. But you know what I mean? So nothing in my life right now is ever going to be so bad that I'm just going to give up. Because no matter how bad I think it is, there's a million people out there in this world who wishes they had every single solitary thing that I have in my life right now. They, yeah. they, they probably dream about it every day. So, no matter how bad it gets, man, you got it better. Than, than you know? some people, yeah. Some people have it a lot worse. Some people do not have a place oh, yeah. to sleep tonight. They're gonna be, there are so many people out there that do not have a place to sleep tonight. They're not going to have a hot plate tonight to eat. You know, so... They don't even know they're gonna be alive tomorrow morning. Yeah, you know yeah. they don't. They don't even know if they're gonna wake up tomorrow morning. So, yeah, wow. we are blessed. We are blessed. Let me ask you this uh, last question: Any any plans on if the if the, if the opportunity arises, uh, reality reality TV? Oh man! Uh... Oh, would, would that be a little bit too dramatic? Too much drama? Would you do like? <laughs> Oh man, you know, I've talked to a lot of people that, that's doing this, and that's actually came up. Like, really, some of these guys, yeah, yeah, some of them have had opportunities to go be on these reality TV shows. Mm-hmm. Oh man, and I'm not gonna say it's a career killer, I'm not gonna say that, but look at these reality TV shows that have come and gone so quickly, it's more of a fad thing. 
you have a job for a while, and then once you're out, you try to go and audition for a show. And like, oh, that's that Polly Shore guy. You know, I mean, not Polly Shore, but Polly or whatever. I can't remember the one reality TV show the guy was on or whatever. Since then, he hasn't gotten anything. And, and it's more, oh, man. I, I, I almost want to say it's a career killer, but then I, I don't want to say it because it's disrespectful to them because they are actors too, you know what I mean? And I right, right, right. Almost, well, I, know, I, 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 I see what you're saying because sometimes uh, some of these reality shows, it's either they're only known for reality to be a reality star or their 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 career have gone nowhere. They've done nothing or they've done nothing else. They haven't done anything in years. I said, yeah. "Well, wow! Look who, look, look! Wow! Look who's in this reality show. I haven't seen him since, you know, right, right, since right. so many years ago. You know, yeah. I haven't seen him since since the show back in the nineties. Or wow, well, he's doing a, a reality show now all of a sudden. So I see. I, yeah. I get what you, I get. What you're saying? Yeah. I get. I get what you're now, saying. I mean. I'm not down in them anyway, because I, like I said, I don't want to put anybody down. I don't want to make anybody feel, no. anybody feel less than, than what they are. But it's it's probably. I mean, let me just summarize to say it's probably an avenue that I probably wouldn't go down. <laughs> put it that way, you know. Right, right, right. Yeah. It's understandable. Terry, thank you so much, man, for 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 oh, joining no, me. That this was thank good. It was, it was this was fun. I, I really enjoyed my conversation with you. Oh uh, yeah, thank. You. Thank you yeah. once again. Folks, make sure you like, subscribe, and share this show, this episode. There you go. Guys, have an awesome, awesome rest of your day. Terry, God bless you, man. God bless you, brother. Thank you for letting me on, man. Yes, sir.